a long thing. So how is everybody doing today? Is everybody good? Yeah. Blessed. Blessed. Good. Blessed. Good. Everyone's blessed. Junior, you're blessed. Okay, yeah. get some thumbs up. Choo choo, how you doing over there? I see you, girl. I was fasting with you today, just so you know. Tian, good. Mama, you good? Everyone's good. Okay, Prophetess Carla, all is well. Rebecca James, okay, good, good. All right, cool. So welcome everyone to our weekly Zoom, our weekly ISI Zoom. As usual, I am excited about today's topic. And today's topic is act now. Now I picked this topic because um, this week has been um, some people in who are doing coaching, they've, they've got to a certain stage in their, their coaching levels and we needed something that was going to kick us into action and teach us about taking action and why do we not take action and what are the things that stop us from taking action and we are going to delve into that today because I really think that it's really great when we understand what stops us from taking action and how can we overcome the things, the hindrances that get in our way that will slow us down or maybe discourage us or, you know, or cause us to not start. You know, is there, I've got some questions for you guys actually today as well. So I really want you guys to, you know, sort of talk back to me and engage with me because we are going in. So um, my subheading is what's stopping you? What is stopping you? And the scripture that we're going to go off today is Romans chapter 7, verse 15 to 24. Okay, so I'll read it for you. I don't know what version I'm reading, so I can't even tell you. I think it's, um, it might be the NIV, but it's, it's more plain English. I know it's not the King James version. I think it might be the NIV version, but I'm not sure, okay? But if whatever version you've got, it pretty much, it says the same thing, but it might just say in a different way. So it says, um, Romans chapter seven, verse 15 to verse 24. I, don't, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. Oh, my earring fell out. Okay, and went all the way over there. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but what I hate to do, I find myself doing. That's not what it says, but it says, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I admit that the law is good. In the case, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. That's a really, really key part, okay? I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do. Instead, I keep on doing the evil I do not want to do. And if I do, not, I do what I don't want, it is no longer I who does it, but the sin living in me that does it. So this is the principle I have discovered. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in my body, warring against the law of my mind and holding me captive to the laws of sin that dwells in me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death now that just sounds so like ah, just heavy and like oh my gosh but let's let me paraphrase it for you and I know I said it over and over again but it's basically saying that what you want to do you don't find yourself doing and the thing that you don't want to do you find yourself doing over and over and over again hey Deborah um but the thing is, is how, so we spoke about, we spoke last week about cycles. So how do we break the cycle? And what is it that makes us want to do the things that we don't want to do? Now, I have a question. I have a couple of questions for you guys. 
my first question is, when I can find it, I wrote them down. My first question to you guys is, what do you think you're here to do? Just have a think about that just for a minute. Why do you think you are here? Because I believe that everybody has a purpose. I believe everybody has a destiny. I believe God has a calling on all of our lives. And it's whether we choose to walk in that calling or walk in that purpose or walk in that destiny. Now, I realize that life happens. Life gets in the way. Circumstances happen. Things happen that can distract you from your purpose, distract you from your destiny, distract you from that business, distract you from writing that book, distract you from taking that course, distract you from doing whatever it is that you need to do to be able to get where you need to get to. Distractions. And one of the biggest distractions that we have in our lives is ourselves. So we are gonna, yes, girl, yes. The, like this body, this flesh, guys, God gave me a revelation. Now I, I've been a Christian for a long time. And I I I wanna I wanna I yeah, I'm gonna talk up the things, you know, Tiana, I'm gonna talk up the things today. This this body that we're living in, now we have to understand that we are born in sin and we're shaped in iniquity. This flesh doesn't get saved. People say, oh, you know, once you've given your life to Jesus, old things are passed away and all things have become new. Yeah, spiritually and inside, and you're, 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 you're walking in, in the salvation lane. But guess what? Just because you're saved, it don't mean you can't buck your toe and cuss a bad word. It don't mean that when you get up the next morning after giving your life to Jesus, the Shekinah of glory is just going to carry you out of the bed and take you to the gym. And then all of a sudden you're just going to become vegan and not eat the meat. And you're not going to, you know, you're not going to stop eating the pork or you're going to, you know, you're just going to be so healthy and drinking water. Oh my gosh. Drinking water, Danielle. You, you're putting me to shame right now. Yeah. Never one week have you not seen me come with a bottle of water. I don't like water. Yeah. But you know why they like water? Because my body doesn't like it. My body likes it and needs it, but my flesh doesn't want me to drink it. Now, the revelation that I've had is that your spirit and your soul is the part of you that will return. Sorry, one second. Talia, can you close that door, please? Talia, thank you. Close the door. Yeah, sorry. That your your spirit and your your soul is the part of you that belongs to God, that goes back to God. And the war that's going on is for your soul. Yeah, that's the war. So when the Bible says, "For um, not we wrestle not against flesh and blood," I'm going to tell you. There's another scripture um, where it says, uh, "When the flesh." The flesh wrestles against the spirit and the, the spirit against the flesh and the one that is enmity to each other. I'll go down my list because I'm kind of just skipping ahead, but I will go down my list and, and I'll give you the scriptures. There is all scriptures and I can I will share these with you. But how many of you want to do something really, you really want to do it in your mind? You want to do it. You know, it's the right thing to do. But for some reason, you just can't seem to do it. You tell yourself every day, uh, right, every day, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do it. I'll, and then tomorrow comes, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, definitely tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes, no, 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 I'll do it at the weekend. No, no, for real, for real, I'll do it at the weekend. And then by the end of the month, you still haven't done the thing. And a whole month has gone past, but you've been telling yourself every day that you're going to do it. Guys, talk back to me. What are some of the things that you've said you want to do but you're not doing one of my what is one of mine, mine Stop is, it. What, <laughs> what is <laughs> tell it all about this is now just saying <laughs> <laughs> listen i don't think i don't think you're the only one that feels like i'm really chatting out their whole life today and okay. i am i am really chatting out my business today because that is really really me it is it really is me so anybody else like uh, deborah what is what is one of the things that 
you want to do but it's like every day you say I'm going to do this I'm going to do it but you just can't seem to get to do it what's one of the things there's actually two things my membership site and my email <laughs> I can't seem for the life of me to get started and get it done so um it's probably been at least two months I've had it and I've just kind of have bits and pieces I just keep nipping at it and nipping at it and I just Last night I just said, and I went, you know, why is it that you can't seem to get this done? You know how important it is. You know, people come to me right now. I'm trying to get a coaching package together. And it's like, yeah, I know how important it is. I'll do it tomorrow. And then the next day, and then the next day, and I'm like, it's been a month. Jeez. But you know, when you, when you have a job, you know, you have to do that thing, right? Because you'll get fired. You won't have any money, your income, your boss, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But when you're at home and you're an entrepreneur, it's a little different because there's nobody sitting in your face saying, you got to do this thing, or right. you have a certain time to get this thing done. So you have to become your own accountability partner. And I don't care what nobody says, that stuff is hard because I'll get up sometimes and, you know, I follow my schedule. And sometimes I get up like this morning, the internet was, I mean, all kinds of stuff was happening to me this morning. I'm thinking to myself, because I was getting up and I said, I got up at three o'clock this morning. I said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do this thing right now. I said, I'm going to go sleepy eyed. So my motivation, prayer, I'm going straight to it. Like, I'm not going to blink, go to the bathroom, eat nothing. Internet went out. I said, okay, let me use my phone. Phone started acting up. I was like, that's not even connected to the internet. I said, that's the devil playing with me this morning. So guess what I did instead? I didn't get that thing done, but I got other things done. I read, I finished the chapters I was supposed to read. I wanted to get my desk cleaned off. I wanted to get my truck fixed. I did all that. So I did all the th other things that I was supposed to that I never got done. So I didn't waste a minute. Like I didn't waste time sitting going, oh my God, internet didn't work. I can't talk to people. Hit them in Messenger. Messenger still works. Okay, fine. Wow. That one thing's done. Yeah. I was allowed to post for some reason, which I, okay, fine. So the things that I had on my list to do otherwise, I still did. So I was like, cool, but this membership thing, and I really realized why it's just like my Facebook Lives and everything else I was doing before. And I kept saying I was scared of because I was afraid to do it, you know, because I knew it was hard. But at the it's same fear. time, it's like you fear. said, doing it's one of the things. Yeah, it was That's fear. Okay, and knowing okay. it's hard and trying to bite and off too hard. much because it's a it's a whole thing like it's not you know it's, it's bits and pieces or pieces and i can just do one thing but i'm looking at the whole thing like oh i got to do all of that but instead of me saying i got to do all of that, i'm like why don't you just do this one package get this one package done and get it out there because once you do that you'll have your template set up for the rest of them and then i went oh that's not that's not so bad i can do that i can do that so I said, when I get up, I'm going to, and I have, and I have people around me that can help. That's the other thing. If you don't have people around you that'll hold you accountable or, you know, call you on your mess or just say, get it done or whatever that you can ask questions to, you'll be a lot less likely to do it too. But I have help. So I'm like, I have no excuse. I'm my own worst enemy. So guess what? All right. So before I go to bed tonight, I will at least have, if I don't have the whole thing finished, I'll at least have the two things finished to do it that I need to have done. Because yeah. it's, it's going to take a little while, but yeah. Gonna, so it, it's fear. It's fear and knowing that it's hard and breaking it down into bite-sized pieces. Like you said yesterday, or see, today's already Wednesday, Lord Jesus. But I got that done. So that's one thing. Well done. <laughs> well done. Okay. Anybody else? Telling other people too, that makes a difference. When you put on social media or tell other people, you kind of have to hold yourself accountable to get it done because otherwise you're going to look crazy. So thank you. I did. Okay, guys, that, that's, that's exactly part of it. Anybody else? Mom. Walk in. Walk in. Okay, tell me about that. <laughs> I want to walk. Mm -hmm. I fix my mind to do it. But when it comes to actually going and do it, I can't. I find it hard. Mm. to actually get dressed and go. Um, I think my problem is I press, can you say the word? Procrastinate. Procrastinate. Yes. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. I'm very good at that. And that is why I don't do nothing. Because it's like sometimes I want to go to Andrea's. As soon as I get that good feeling, 
the feeling just goes away. It's, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, no, no, I don't think I'm going. And the feeling just goes. Yes. And I get that good vibes that I want to do it. But all of a sudden, the good vibes gone and I don't want to go to Andrea's. I, I'm thinking, oh, driving my car, going all the way to London. It's, oh, yeah. I'm, it's one hundred. It's um, one hour and forty-five. I think of all the reasons why. Now, another thing that I do, I want to go to the shop. I need the things, but I'm thinking, oh, I can't be bothered. I want it, but I can't be bothered. I think, oh, I'll get it tomorrow. Oh, it's not like. Well, Tomorrow come up to now, I haven't got it yet. Yeah, tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow never comes. For Andrea, who, who stayed on the phone with me, Mum, come on, we're going out for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to put on my clothes with my fat air put in my ears, and then Andrea walked with me all the way to the shop and back. And that was yeah. the only way I really would have done it. But that's exactly what Didi was talking about, having somebody who you're accountable to. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to talk about the, how we can overcome the, the procrastination, the law of diminished intent, you know, and Didi said motivational videos help. They help too. But it's, it, having a real person there is, is, is way better. You know, if you ain't got a real person, then a video. Okay, anybody else have a thing that they they want to do, but they don't they don't do it, or they think I should do this, or you've been trying to do something and you're not doing it. Anybody else? I just need just one more. Anyone? Yeah, me. Junior. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're gonna you're gonna bash me over the head for this, Andrea. Hmm. But yeah. Um, you know, for the longest time, I've been trying to redecorate my house. Yeah, um, I've started, I've cleared rooms. I said, okay, I'm going to start today. Then all of a sudden, I put myself... Guys, let me just interrupt one second. Bear in mind, this guy is a painter decorator, phenomenal <laughs> one. He decorated my whole house. So just bear that in mind, okay? Okay, carry on, Junior. Yeah, so um, we've spoken about this. Oh, come on, you know, yeah, you should do it and so forth. So yeah, yeah, you should do it. But I still haven't got around to doing what I really want to do. And what's really holding me back? I'm going to tell you what's holding me back. And I'm, I'm sure I must have said this to you already, Andrea. It's these doors. I've got about 13 doors in my flat. And these 13 doors, to rub them down, I'm just thinking, oh, my God. But yet still... For me to go out there and do somebody else's. 13 doors. I'm just, I'm just amazing out there, but in my own home, I'm not. <laughs> so, yeah, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm striving to get done and finish um, in the near future that okay. I will share with you guys, yeah. Well, hopefully after today, Junior, you will be motivated enough to get it. <laughs> done hopefully hope so. after today <laughs> you guys will be motivated to do that thing that you've been wanting to do now one of the things is is that and i'm going to talk from a spiritual standpoint first and then we're going to just talk about like i guess the, the normal standpoint is that so we we yeah definitely dd but what one of the things is spiritually okay you have to understand we are body spirit and what are we soul yeah those three things so we're soul flesh and or body whichever one that's still flesh and spirit now your your spirit is the god part of you your spirit is the bit that says get up go do move forward with your life get a life coach change your mindset grow be awesome change the world go talk to that neighbor forgive that person love those idiots do this get that job write that book this that side that spirit side of you is your biggest cheerleader they that he cheers you on father god cheers you on he inspires he brings you everything that you need to do what you need to do but then you have 
your body. Now, let's go back to the very, very, very beginning. Now, by, by design, we were supposed to be able to do everything that we're supposed to do. We were supposed to be able to live out the lives that God ordained and predestined for us. When he made Adam and he made Eve, he made them perfectly. They were without sin. They, they didn't have any sickness. They didn't have any deformities. They didn't have any mental health issues, but they had something called free will. And it's something that we all have the luxury of up until this very, very day. And when Adam and Eve were in the garden and God gave them the instructions, eat of everything, anything you want, eat, but just don't eat of this tree. Now human nature kicked in and the, the devil came and he whispered to Eve, I was like, yo, my girl, you see the fruit upon that there tree? Hey, look, good dinner. Give that to Adam and he go love you tonight. Yeah, that's what he told her. And she was like, <laughs> oh. Oh. she went and toyed around and listened to him. And he sweet her up. But you know what he did? He used a bit of truth, but he put a lie in there. He said, it's good for food and it's good for sustenance and all of these things. And he was like, you know, if you eat it, you will not die. Even though God told them, you eat that, you're going to die. And he didn't mean, see, our, maybe our brain and thought, all right, you eat it, you drop dead. But that wasn't it. It was, we were going to be given over to the will of the flesh. He said, once you've given the enemy that foothold, our will was given over, our, our desire will was given over to the enemy. And therefore, from the dust we came and to the dust we got a return. And this flesh knows it's not going to heaven. This flesh knows it's not going to be in the sweet by and by. It knows it's going back to the dust from whence it came. And it's like, well, if I'm going to the dust, I'm going to take you with me. And that's its sole purpose is to take us back to the dust with it. I'm not doing our purpose, not doing our destiny, not fulfilling, not writing that book, not singing that songs. Do you know how many un- sung songs are in the graveyard do you know how many uninvented inventions are in the graveyard unwritten books undone plays un, undone um films unwritten films or they were written and they just the person walked in fear because they just went to their grave full i told god me i want to go to my grave empty I want to go to my grave knowing that I gave everything that I was here to give, here to do, love every person that I was here to love, touch every life that I was here to touch, reach every corner, every crevice, shine everywhere that he predestined for me to shine. But let me tell you something, there's an adversary and that adversary is called Andrea Smith. She is a troublemaker. She gets up in the morning. She stretches and rubs her eyes. And she says, oh, I can't be bothered with this. This is long. This is, this is too hard. Talking to people every day is long. Da -da 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 -da. It, all of these things. But I, Andrea, my soul woman doesn't feel like that. Andrea, my soul woman, wants to get up every day and she wants to go and knock every neighbor and say, look, come to ISI, come and have life coaching. I can change your life. God has given me a, a magic formula and I can help you. Come, come, come. That's what I want to do. But then fear comes in and the law of diminished intent kicks in. Even when I desire to do a thing, I don't do it because the law of diminished intent kicks in. What is the law of diminished intent? The law, excuse me, of diminished intent is when you have a, as my mom said, a aha moment, or when you have that, the vibes, you've got the good vibes and the good vibes kicks in as if you don't take action quickly, it starts to go downhill. You get, you, it, it comes up 
and then it reaches that pinnacle and you're at that high place and you're like, I'm gonna write that book. I'm gonna go do that class. I'm gonna kick myself into gear. I'm gonna change my mindset. I'm gonna go and exercise. I'm gonna eat healthy. I'm gonna, you have that. And as soon as the thought comes, if you don't take action quickly after that thought, it starts to go down. And then you're like, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it next week. Oh, okay, maybe next month when I've got a bit more money. Oh, when I've got a bit more time. Oh, I'm too tired. Oh, can't be bothered. And then before you know it, you're sitting on the couch, eating a packet of crisps, drinking that soda. Don't talk about it. <laughs> not eating healthy. <laughs> do what you're not supposed to do. And then two, three months down the line, you look at yourself and you're like, rah. I still haven't done that thing that I wanted to do. I still haven't recorded that video. I still haven't done that, 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 that assignment. I still haven't done my email. Sorry. I still haven't, <laughs> I still haven't made that phone call. I still haven't done it. And if you think back, if you had just started taking action a month ago, you would have been a month further on than you would have been where you're at. It's about taking action. What you guys need to do is that when you get that thought, when you get that idea, when you get that moment, you have to act on it, even if it's a small action, but take small actions quickly. Just something small. You get the idea, do you know what I do? I go and I write down the idea. That's just me taking a small action. I get an idea. Oh, I wanna, I wanna um, do a youth department for ISI. So what do I do? Before I just let the moment go, I quickly go and I write it down. Youth department for ISI. What would that look like? Then I start getting excited again. And it, and it increases the law of, it, you know, the law of diminished intent doesn't have time to kick in because I start getting excited. Oh, yeah, I wanna write my book. Okay, let, let me just go and write one verse. Let me, just, let me just go and write a sentence in my book. So you start writing a sentence and the next thing you know, you've written five sentences and then tomorrow comes and you're like, yeah, 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 my book. Oh yeah, let me do it now. And what I've developed, well, I wouldn't say I've developed, what I've developed is a habit actually of taking action quickly. I give myself 30 seconds to a minute to talk myself into doing something rather than talking myself out of it. And I would really advise you guys, if there's something you want to do within the first 30 seconds of thinking about that thing, take 30 seconds and give yourself the reason why you should do it. Now, I just want to think about, think of all of you really quickly, just think about something that you want to do. Think about something that you want to do, that you want to take action on. Just think about it. I'm just going to give you just a few seconds. Think about it. If you've got it, just raise a hand so I know that you've got that thing in your mind. Yep, okay. Deborah, Deborah, mom, who else? You got that thing in your mind? Think about it. Danielle, you got that thing in your mind? She half raised her hand. You see that? She's like, mm. <laughs> she's like, mm, I think so. All right, yeah, get it in your mind. Junia, yep, okay. Tian, lovely. Yep, yep, yep. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Choo choo, okay. Yeah, get that thing in your mind. Now, what could you do in this moment to move you in that direction? Start thinking about that. Think of why you can do it and how, what could you do right now or in the next 30 seconds that you could, what you, what's your thought process? What could you do? What could you do to move you in that direction? What could you do? What could you do? What could you do? Think about it. Some of you, you might just need to go and write it down. Some of you might need to go and tell somebody about it. Somebody might, you might need to get that accountability partner and, partner and be like, listen, I really want to walk into the room. Yeah, okay, what could you do? Talk to me, guys. If you, wanna, if you don't want to talk verbally, talk to me. What could you do? What could you do to make that thing happen? What could you do that can make that thing happen? What action can you take? And this is what you need to be saying to yourself. You want to you wanna, you wanna start a podcast what could you do? Okay, start researching. How do I do a podcast? Look at other people's podcasts. How can I, how can I get myself in that direction? I, I want to, what's the word? Be proactive. 
this is what we're saying. Be proactive, proactive, activating it, moving forward. Be proactive, positively active. What could you do? What could you do? And this, what I want, I went and told social media. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see. I just have to read what you guys. Are saying. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's another good way. Like if, if you if you if you are a social media person, put it out there on social media. Set yourself a challenge, you know, and be like, guys, I really have decided that I'm gonna do this. And you kind of feel shame if you don't do it. And then, you know, a week goes past and, you know, you might get one of your followers comment, oh, what happened with the thing? You didn't come back with a, and you're like, shame, guy, really put it out there. And the shame will make you do it. The shame might kick you into gear. So you have to find out what is it that I need to do to get me to the place that I need to get to? Where do you want to be? Do you want to be here a year from now? Or do you want to be further on in your life? And if you want to be further in your life, what do you need to change now? What small steps can you take now that are going to help you to get to where you want to get to? When I started ISI, um, emotionally, I wasn't in a good place. Mentally, I wasn't in a good place. But there was something in me that was like, I need to be around like-minded people. I need to be around people who iron sharpens iron. I need, I need to be around some other iron people. I need to be around people who are gonna help me to be motivated to take action, to you know, get me to that level. But I wasn't even thinking that it was gonna turn into this. I wasn't even thinking that this is what it was gonna be. I just thought, okay, five of us a week, you know, we'll come, we'll do ISI, it's gonna be great. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm, I'm a life coach. I'm an international life coach. You know, I have, I have clients in America. I feel so proud to say I have clients in America. I'm like, oh, oh, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. But I had to start. And the, and the, the trick is you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. It, it was an idea first. And then it became a reality. Firstly, it was it was an idea, and I thought, you know what? Yeah, let's do ISI. And then and then you know, and the other thing that we have is the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we forget that we have an unfair advantage over our flesh. We have the Holy Spirit, but the problem is, if you don't listen to Holy Spirit, then it's not going to do you any good. It's not going to do you any good because I tell you what, your flesh. Your flesh is not on your side. Tell me one person whose flesh tells them to get up and go to the gym. You might start doing it because you got because of habit. Tell me one person, one person whose body tells them, don't eat that donut. You, 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 your flesh tells you. You see the donut, you want the donut, but it takes a willpower to not eat the donut. You never just say, don't eat the donut. It's not good for you. And that's that's the dominant. It's not that. That's not the natural default. The default is go eat the donut. Eat, listen, I eat all the donuts. Go get the McDonald's. Go have Burger King today. Don't cook no food. Listen to me. Can't be bothered to go in the kitchen. Let me just buy McDonald's. Uber Eats. It's so easy. Uber Eats. Look. <laughs> listen, it's the, what? Who, what? Who tell you go for that walk? Uh-uh. Go for that walk. When do your legs ever tell you to get up and go walk? When? When your batty ever tell you get up off the sofa and go and do exercise? No, it doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. She <laughs> she said my flesh tells me don't eat. This to me, my flesh doesn't tell me don't eat the donut. My flesh tells me eat the donut. Yeah, it tell eat the chocolate choo choo. Yeah, I know your secrets. All right, eat the popcorn. Flesh don't tell you don't eat the popcorn, but the uh, don't eat the bagels. Listen, bagels. Oh lord, I love me some bread. You know, I love bread. I love potatoes. When I go in that kitchen and I'm making my breakfast, have you ever seen my breakfast on Snapchat? Let me show you my breakfast this morning. That's I am not supposed to eat bagels. Sister, look at her. Ah, I love I bagels and potatoes. Not, listen, bread and potatoes.
potatoes <laughs> are my crip tonight. Look at my breakfast this morning. Don't talk about it. That really was my breakfast. You know what's in there? The 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 the, the bagels. There is there is baby corn in my scrambled eggs. Who does that? I love food. My body tells me, yeah, make the food. It's you like the food because I like it. It doesn't tell me, but then I was good because I put salad. <laughs> there was there was salad there. So that was that was my that was that was my thing. I had salad. Don't tell me nothing. I had salad. It doesn't matter that I had bagels and my stomach was very, very bloated afterwards and I felt like I wanted to sleep because every time I eat bread, it just makes me want to sleep. And I know I shouldn't eat bread, but I like the bread. My son said, she sound like you. <laughs> Listen, me and Didi, I swear we're twins, man. I, I, got, I got a few twin flames and I love it. But what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, oh, what's your, Andre, weekend at your yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's breakfast. When you lot come to my house, yeah, this is what you'll be getting for breakfast. This is breakfast, yeah. But don't come and tell me you're on a diet because I will do everything to make you eat what you're not supposed to eat. I really will. Why would I do that? Because my flesh is out of order. Why would I do that? Because I am not good in my flesh. My spirit woman will be like, don't eat it. But the inside of me, like, <laughs> eat the day that let me make some nice food for you to eat oh you want it you know you want it here's some crisps here's a sweet I will do that naturally I will want to do that I am so troublesome naturally I like making trouble I like troublesome people why because my flesh is troublesome it just is what it is but you have to understand yeah that we are spirit and we are soul and we are body and our body should not dominate us. We should not be dominated by our flesh. You will start something. How many of you ever start something? Okay, so you got past the law of diminished intent and you started it, but you just couldn't. You just couldn't keep it up. You just, ugh, after a while, it just got, you know, the excitement wore off and the law of diminished intent kicked in. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, listen, and the law of diminished intent kicked in and you're like, oh man, yeah, it was exciting at the beginning and you had all the energy to do it and you had all the big and you were so, how many of you have started your ISI journey and you were so excited the first two sessions, <laughs> you, you, the first three sessions, you were so excited, but then the assignment started kicking you in the butt. And you was like, oh, I haven't done my assignment. Oh, I haven't done my journal. Oh, Andrea's going to tell me off because I haven't done my journal. And, oh, man, I can't be bothered. Oh, can I reschedule my, can I reschedule my, um, can I reschedule my thing with you today? I ain't done my homework. And he's like, oh, I can't afford it. <laughs> <That's isn't> it? <laughs> I can't afford it. I can't, Tian said journals. What is journals? <laughs> you see, journals. What is journals? How many, how many of you on the ISI journey? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not the only one, Tian. Don't worry about it. You, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even all the way overseas, it's happening. It's even happening overseas. People don't be doing their journal and they be getting some slaps on the wrist because they don't be, this journal thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, they, yeah, they be doing, they be doing these funny stuff. And I'm like, get your journal done like this. Do this, do that, do this. And you guys will come to me as a life coach and I'm going to say to you, right, guys, the, the reason why life coaching works and how it works best is what you put in is what you're going to get out of it. Yeah. If you come to the table with your flesh front, you're not going to get out of it what you need to. You have to push your flesh to the background and bring your spirit person forward. Because I tell you what, when you come in a spiritual mindset, you see miracles. I remember me and Danielle's first session. She came, obviously she didn't know what to expect. She was very apprehensive and whatever. But then we started talking about things of the spirit. And I lied, Danielle, it got really exciting really quickly, right? It was like, oh, you understand the levels that I'm on. You understand where I'm at, okay? And then the spirit woman kicked in and you were like, yeah, because this is this and this is this. And spirit spirit to spirit is where it ignites if you come and sit in your flesh you ain't gonna get what you need to get because this flesh is not on your side your flesh is 
fighting against you day and night, day and night, day and night, second after second. Your flesh is not on your side. And this is why you, the Bible says that we need to die daily, die to our flesh daily. And he says, um, my mom was saying a few weeks ago that what you feed grows and what you starve dies. So if you keep feeding your flesh, the flesh says, don't go to the gym, you give in, that's feeding your flesh. Your flesh says, quit that job, quit that book. You're feeding the flesh. The flesh says, don't film that video this week. You're feeding the flesh. It says, don't write that journal. You don't do that email. Don't set up that thing that you're supposed to set up. Don't go for that walk. And every time you give in to what the flesh tells you to do, you are empowering, empowering your flesh. And you need to be empowering your spirit. The reason why I can come here week after week after week is why? Because of a discipline, a disciplined mind where I need to, I say to myself, okay, Andrea, show up and show up every week. Show up when it hurts, show up when it doesn't hurt, show up when you feel good, show up when you don't feel good, but show up. And every time my flesh says, don't bother to show up, I show up. I show up. Every week, I show up. Every day, I show up. I have my list. Another thing that you can do is lists are great things to have. Goals. Set yourself goals and stick to them. And if you fail, get back on it again. There's always another day. Tomorrow's another day. Today's another day. Today is another day. Every day, set your goals what did I need to do? Oh, I got to do this this week. I've, I've written down this. This week I'm going to, and I would say set small goals. Don't set unattainable goals. Set goals that are easy to reach because what you need to do is you need to train your body and your mind to be in a winning phase and not in a failure mode. So small wins are still wins. And this is what I'm saying. So when I say small goals, I don't mean small, I mean short-term goals. Like, um, like what I do is I have a list and it's like three things on my list. I have a spiritual goal, I have a physical goal and I will have a business goal for each day. So my spiritual goal might be make sure I pray today and be grateful that my, my, my um, physical goal might be eat something healthy today, make sure you eat healthy. Um, and then my next goal will be um, to uh, do something in regards to your business, ISI, you know, look at that website, do some research, but just do one thing that's gonna move your business forward. And I guarantee you when you get in the habit of setting goals, mini goals daily, you're going to see yourself win. And that is one of the ways that you are able to overcome your flesh. So I'm just going to read this. So it says, we as humans, we, we are, we are born with, we, we are born as a three-part structure, which I've just said, the body, which is the flesh part of you. And that is dominated by the enemy. Now, the enemy is the negative energy. I know a lot of us think of the devil as that he's got two horns and he's got a tail with a fork. That's rubbish. He's not that. He, he, he's an energy. He is negative energy. He is everything negative that you can think about. He is hatred. He is deceit. He is jealousy. He is everything, like the worst stuff that is who he is, yeah? He is everything that doesn't have anything to do with love. And God is love. God is everything to do with love. God is love. And so when we are, when the, when the enemy came, this is why we needed Jesus. I know I spoke about this with, I think it was Danielle, I spoke about this this week. And I was saying, the reason why we needed Jesus is because we were all on our way to hell because of our free will, we had given ourselves over to sin freely, freely, I will add, yeah? It, he didn't, he tricked us, 
but we had to give it away freely. He couldn't take it because mom, what was that scripture that you were saying about um, we have the power over all of the works of the enemy. We have power. We have it. We, what is it, mom? Uh, look, sorry it doesn't matter where it's taken from what was it and then we'll find it what did it say it's look look eight it says um um, tell me what it says you know what it says oh (laughs) it says that jesus said i have given you power authority over all the power of the devil. Right. We have authority over all the power of the devil. Yeah. That we can tread on scorpions, snakes, they will not hurt us because we have the power over them. Right. And it doesn't mean physical snakes and scorpions. It's not no. to say, go out and start stepping on snakes and scorpions. But then you be like, like what well, Andrea said, no, I didn't. Because if you do that, they could bite your foot and you have to go to hospital and you might die. Can't help you. Yeah, I love it. Can't help you. But what he means is that negative. So he, what we have to understand is nothing can have dominion and power over us unless we give it power remember when i said to you about your words watching what you say you know how we act the devil can whisper in your ears all day long but if you choose every day to win if you choose every day that i'm not going to give up i am going to do this thing i am going to um succeed i am going to write that book i am going to do can finish my isi journey i am going to you know make take myself to the next level i am going to do like Nothing can can change that unless you choose to. It's literally a choice. Every time we get um, a summit happens, there's a choice. You can either choose life or you can choose death. And when you go to your flesh, you are choosing death. When you go towards your spirit, you are choosing life. Um, you know, when you when you read the word of God, I'm just going to come to a couple a few of the scriptures. So Genesis chapter six, verse three says, so the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortals. His days shall be 120 years. You know, our lives were shortened because of this sin, because of sin. Like we were meant to some of us like back in back in then they used to live to 900, 800 years. To be honest, I don't even think I'd want to live that long now because of this. Life. Who wants to live 800 years in this world how it is? I don't think I'd want to be here for 800 years the way it is. I, I really don't. So I kind of thank God that we only have a certain amount of time. Um, Romans chapter 7 says, I do not understand what I do for what I want to do, I don't do, but what I hate, I do. Now, the very thing that we hate doing, Some of us might be struggling with smoking. Some of us might struggle with alcohol. Some of us might struggle with lust. Some of us might be addicted to pornography. And you you know, every day you're on a computer and you're like, I'm not gonna watch the porn today. I'm not gonna watch it. And then all of a sudden something just flashes up on your screen and you're like, no, let me just have a quick look. And the next thing you're there watching a whole whole thing and all stuff is happening and you're just like, ah, and then you feel guilty. Like, and or uh, 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 I am going to go to the gym. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to go to, and we don't. You sit there. Uh, you, so it's that whole thing. What you desire to do, you don't do it. Why? Because it's the sin that is in your flesh that's working against you that makes you do it. This is why we need our savior. This is why we need Jesus Christ. This is why we have to accept Jesus Christ. Because I'll tell you what, nothing that you do is good enough nothing you cannot earn salvation it is a gift the bible says for the wages of sin there's wages for sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life now imagine this wages gift do you earn gifts no you don't what do you have to do to have a gift receive it Jesus Christ is what we have to receive to get the gift 
of eternal life. If we choose to not accept the gift, then there is wages for our sin. So we sinned and we get paid for it. The payment for you sinning is death. That is what the payment is. When we sinned in the Garden of Eden, the payment for the sin was death. And it was a choice that they made. There was no shame in the garden. They walked around butt naked. He didn't be like, ooh, girl, your butt is big. And she was like, don't look at my butt, don't look at my breast. She wasn't, she wasn't doing all of that. She was walking, everything was just out. He was just out, everything's just out. They were just free. And then as soon as sin kicked in, shame came. Shame came, comes with sin. Shame comes with sin. When you're in Christ, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation, none. There is no condemnation. People, people will tell you, oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. There is nothing you can do to please God. There is nothing you can do. He said, your righteousness comes before, is like filthy rags to me. Filthy rags. Your righteousness. So you think of the most righteous person mother Teresa or one of these people that comes to him as filthy rags because there is we are in sin God and the reason why God separated himself from us at that point is because he couldn't look at sin and that's why he had to bring Jesus Christ that's why he had because we had to be covered in the blood of Jesus so that he could look on us and see his son and not destroy us because he is so holy and he is so pure that he can't look at these things and when we're operating in our flesh, this is why our flesh will not tell you, your flesh will not tell you to do anything that is right. Your flesh will not tell you to go and study. Your flesh will not tell you to pick up that book. Your flesh will not tell you to go and shoot that video. Your flesh will not, because it knows if you do these things, you're going to get one step closer to your purpose. You're going to get one step closer to your destiny. You're going to get one step closer to your deliverance. You're going to get one step closer to your healing. And guess what? If you get healed, you're bound to go and help somebody else. So it's like, if I can stop you, hmm, the devil has tried to stop me over and over. Listen. My life, Lord Jesus, when I write my book, you're going to be like, how? How does she even smile? How does she, how does she, how does she be like that? Like literally, sob story after sob story, heartbreak after heartbreak, dip, disappointment after disappointment, depression after depression, uh, you name it, you name it. Every time I try to get up, I'd get knocked down by life. But you know what I wouldn't do? I wouldn't stay down. I was like that weeble wobble. You knock me down, I'm like, boing, boing, boing. I come back up again. <laughs> you knock me down, I'm like, boing, boing, boing. I'm still here. I might be cut, I might be bruised, I might be battered, but I'm like, I'm getting up and I'm like, no matter. I'm like, I'm still, I'm like that, that you know, and in the boxing ring and, and when, when Rocky was getting boxed down and it's like, stay down. And Rocky was like, Adrian. Like he's getting up, he's getting up. That was me, I was getting up. I keep getting up and that's what you have to do. You have to keep getting up. You have to get up and take action. Do not let your circumstances dictate to you. You need to dictate to your circumstances. You need to say to your life, I'm ready for a change. Okay, you ready for a change? I'm gonna see about that. Yeah, watch, I'm gonna bring depression on you tomorrow. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a bellyache tomorrow. I'm gonna give you a headache tomorrow. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And you've got to say, you know what? Headache or no headache, I'm still gonna do what I gotta do. And you watch how fast that headache goes. Depression or no depression, I'm still going to do what I need to do. You watch how fast that depression leaves. Anxiety or no anxiety, you do it anyway. You watch how fast that anxiety leaves. You know, I would say to, I would say to my mom, mom, have you got something to say? She gets all shy. <laughs> no, I have nothing to say. And then I'm like, mom, come on, come on, come on, come on, talk, talk. And then when she starts talking, she don't want to stop. Because, because the, 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 the spirit woman, comes alive the spirit woman comes alive in her and she begins to understand who she is and it's it's about knowing who you are and more importantly whose you are and that we have um the holy spirit that helps us 
Okay, I'm gonna read. Um, Andrea. Yes. Can I say something, please? Going back to um, Genesis, whatever you read there, mm -hmm. about you said the dying bit. Yeah. We die twice. Okay. There's two deaths. There's a spiritual death and there's the natural death. The death away from God and the death that you actually die and go to the grave. So we die twice. Yeah. Yeah, so when the Bible talks about the wages of sin is death, yeah. it talks about two deaths, a spiritual one and a physical death. So when we come to Christ now, when we give our life to Christ, that, that spiritual death now is no longer because now you're having that fellowship back with God. So we don't die anymore. But when the people in the world don't give their life to Christ, imagine you die from the presence of God and you're dead in hell. You're dead, body dead, gone to grave and then hell. Yeah, yeah. That's like that hell actually is absolute separation from God. From God, that's it. That's, yeah. that's hell. You know, we think that hell is this place with demons and blah, blah, blah. It's an absolute separation from God. It's being in eternity with a separation from Father God. Like no love, no joy, no peace, no no care, no love, nothing being in, or if you think of everything negative, heightened, everything, the absolute, imagine the absolute absence of God, the absolute absence of love, the absolute, like imagine dying and having to be your spirit, being in that aware, alive for eternity. I'm sorry, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not willing to take the chance that that will be my that that will be my portion. I'm not winning. I'm not winning. Eternity is a very long time. You know, eternity is a long time. So guess what? You you see, we, we, we think about this life journey and we think of it as the be all and end all. But when you think of it in a scheme of eternity, this is just like a dot in the blip of eternity. We are, we are eternal beings going through a human experience. And it's not an easy experience to find God and find your purpose and find your destiny and do what you're here to do because we're all here to help each other to get back to God that's what we're all here to do we're all here to help each other to get back to God that's what we're here to do but some of us don't take the time to have a relationship with God. We give ourselves over to the flesh. We give ourselves over to our fleshly desires. We, we don't allow the spirit of God to come alive in us. We don't go and be taught. The Bible says, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. We don't come to things like this. You know, things like this, I think to myself, why isn't there more people here? Why isn't more people wanting to know about God? Why aren't more people, you know, grasping this concept of, um, being who God has called them to be and walking in their divine destiny and their purpose. But for me, I'm like, if I can help one person, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do all of this if it means I'm going to help one person. If I'm going to help two people, I will do all of this if it means because I'm like, Lord, I want to know that what the assignment you gave me, that I did it and I did it to the best of my ability. And I'm not saying I don't make mistakes. I'm not saying the law of diminished intent doesn't kick in, but you know the, this dying to self daily letting the flesh die daily how do you let the flesh die daily don't give in to the fleshly desires if the flesh says lay down get up if the flesh says um don't eat healthy eat healthy if the flesh says don't write that book get your pen out and write anyway just do the i tell you what <laughs> the secret is do the opposite of whatever your flesh tells you to do it's literally that Whatever your flesh tells you to do, do the opposite. Because I guarantee you, if your flesh is telling you to do it, it's not for your benefit. Whatever your flesh tells you to do, do the opposite. Some of you might say, oh, but your flesh might tell you to go to the gym. Then don't go. Because <laughs> I guarantee you, your flesh is not going to tell you to go to the gym. 
unless Holy Spirit saying, don't go to the gym today. But if it's just like, go on, go to the gym. You know you want it. Yeah, 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 go, go, go. But your spirit woman or your spirit man is like, don't go today. You got this feeling on the inside, don't go today. Like, cause sometimes the spirit will tell you not to do things that are good for you. Like I remember one Sunday I woke up and the Holy Spirit said, don't go to church today. I was like, what? That's the devil. I rebuke you, devil. <laughs> it's like, don't go to church today. I went to church. I sat in church. I said to myself, my God, I wish I'd stayed home today. People were getting on my nerves. Someone scratched my car, all kind of thing. I said, why? Why didn't I listen? Why? Because to me, I was like, nah, nah, nah. God's not going to tell me not, go, not to go to church. But I felt it in my spirit. And that's where it's learning to know the voice of God and knowing the difference between when God's speaking and when your flesh is speaking. So is this helping you guys? Is this helping you guys? Yeah, thumbs up, helping. Is this helping? Um, um, can I say yeah. something? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's off of what... Um patricia was saying about um the spiritual death and the physical death because when i gave my life to christ um just before that i the reason why i did is because i felt like i was like dead inside um just felt like i just didn't want to live i was at my lowest point in my life and when i gave my life to um christ that week i was experiencing things that i'd never experienced before I couldn't Hang on, Maya. that I couldn't explain and um it was very overwhelming like I felt like I could have lost my mind basically um and then since that day like I've experienced things that I didn't experience before I think in ways that I never used to think before before I used to cry every day I felt like I I used to say um to my friend like one of my friends that um I felt like I wasn't home. Like I feel like I'm away from, I'm here and I'm longing to go home, but I don't know where home is. Like, and it's only after giving my life to Christ that everything from the past makes sense now. And even though I have hard times still and I have low days, but because I'm in a different mindset or a different place now, I, I face those things with like confidence and like there's a purpose for it. And knowing that these, things that I perceive as bad or negative, one day in the future, like will make sense. And I do feel like when I gave my life to Christ that I became alive in a, in a way that I couldn't explain because a lot of the things I, couldn't, I can't put into words, but it's a feeling. So yeah, just want to share that. <laughs> I, was trying to, I was trying to unmute and I turned off my camera, sorry. Danielle, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, but that's exactly it you you because your spirit desires to be with the father your spirit desires to be with the father and your soul is it wants to go with your spirit back to the father so you saying you, you you didn't feel like you were home you wanted to go home but you didn't know where home was and I think as as human beings we're all everybody has that inherent thing that they, there's a home place for them. People, even people who say, oh, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in something. You believe in something, you believe in yourself. You wake up every morning, you breathe the air, your eyes open. There's no such thing as an atheist. If you're an atheist, you don't believe in yourself then. So what are you telling me, you don't believe in you? You don't, you don't, you're not real, no? Okay, you're a figment of your own imagination. And even that couldn't make sense because for you to have an imagination, you'd have to be something. So how is that even possible? If it's, I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. I, I, I love everybody, but I don't understand it. That I don't understand because I know that we all have an inherent desire to return back to the father. But you see, this flesh is going down to the grave. It's going back to the dust from whence it came. It knows that there's nowhere that it's going to go other than back down there. And to, it's like that our spirit knows that it's eternal. And it's like that desire to return back to God and the things of God, that's why we're here. That's why we come to ISI week after week. That's why we go to church. That's why we fellowship with like-minded people. This is why we, we seek to grow. We seek to do more. And we wanna help others to get there too. So when we get there, we're like, yeah, I've got there. 
I want you to get there too. I want us, uh, let's go together. Let's, let's do this thing. Let's iron sharpens iron. Let's get there together. But what happens? The flesh kicks in and says, hmm, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. How many of you, how many of you ever said, oh, this is too hard. I can't be bothered. This is too much effort. Oh, this is a favorite one. I heard this one today. It's long. It's just all long, isn't it? <laughs> It's just long, isn't it? It's just, it's just long. <laughs> it's just long. I can't be bothered. And that is your flesh. Because if you silence your flesh and you listen to your spirit, but that's a daily. When it says dying daily, it doesn't mean kill yourself every day. It means dying to your desires, your fleshly desires every day. Yeah, my friend, listen, Tian. My flesh be screaming sometimes. My flesh be screaming. But you know the funny thing is, huh, this is another thing that I realized is this wicked, sinful flesh. What do we do? We bathe it every day. We brush its teeth. We put makeup on it. We give it a haircut. We try to make it look nice. And still by the end of the day, you're stinking. You do all of these things, but you still stink. By the end of the day, if you, 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 you know, you get the little B.O. under the armpits, the, the, the deodorant has worn off because the flesh is corruptible. So it's like every day the flesh is dying. Every day is corruptible. Every day. There's nothing good in this flesh. What do we do? We eat the unhealthy foods and then we make ourselves sick. But when we're there making ourselves sick, our flesh is not telling us to eat healthy. It's still you're making yourself sick but yet still you're eating, the, you're eating the crisps. Yet still you're eating the unhealthy food. Yet still you're smoking the cigarettes. You know, it says it on the cigarette packet, smoking gives you cancer, but yet still they're chuffing. Chuffing, 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 because the flesh wants it. You get the desire and the flesh wants it. You, you, you get the desire to, to, to not, not read your Bible. Well, what your flesh doesn't tell you to read your Bible. The flesh doesn't tell you to pray. The flesh doesn't tell you to fast. Because when you fa one of the good ways to put the flesh under subjection, guys, it's fasting. I hate fasting. My flesh hates fasting. Andrea loves fasting because I know when I fast, I get results. I know when I put my flesh under subjection and I allow my spirit woman to rise up, I see change. I see breakthrough. I see healing. I see deliverance. When I, when I allow my spirit woman to rise up, I see change. I see but when I allow my flesh to say, you don't want to fast, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that, you cannot let your flesh dictate. How many of you are willing to make the decision to stop letting your flesh dictate to you? How many of you are willing to stand with each other and, and get an accountability partner? Get someone, if there's something you want to do, if there's somewhere you want to go, you need to be willing. And thank you for those of you who put your hands up and those of you who said, I'm willing. Thank you. Thank you. Because it's time to change. How long are you going to let the devil tell you how to live your life? How long are you going to let your flesh tell you what you should do and where you should go and who you should be and how you should be? And how long are you going to let your flesh dictate who you are and whose you are? When you understand whose you are, and who you are, you're not going to let your flesh dictate. You see, some of us don't understand, yeah? And I think I was talking to Brother Keith about this today, is that some people will never step foot into a church. But you need to be the Jesus that they see. You need to be the church. You need to bring salvation to people who are not going to go to church. Because not everybody will make it into the church. Not everybody will make it through those church doors. But some people... Anybody who comes into contact with you has an opportunity to find Jesus. They have an opportunity to change their life. See me, I tell you, I do this all the time. I go into the supermarket. I find somebody to give some positive energy because you don't know if that person come in there and the next thing they're thinking they're going to go and commit suicide. But you just said to them, oh, your hair looks really pretty. Or, oh, I like that lipstick. Or, yeah, man, those trainers are bad. Or just little things it doesn't cost us anything to to encourage someone to share it doesn't cost us anything and just those little acts of kindness 
are showing Christ. Those little acts of kindness, of love, showing God. Why? Because God is love. If you show love, guys, let me tell you the power of love. Let me, let me show you. So you guys know about a few weeks ago, like I said to you, I've been dealing with Talia and she has ADHD. And like I said, and I keep saying it because, you know, it, and it's not been easy. It has not been easy because my flesh wants to rise up when she's doing funny stuff. I want to get upset. I want to get angry. I want to shout at her. I want to be like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I have to just hold my peace and I have to act in love. And I tell you, since I've been acting in love, I've seen a change in her. But to be consistently persistent, it can be very difficult because my flesh doesn't want to do it. My flesh, my ego is like, I'm the parent. I'm not going to let you talk to me like that. I'm not going to bow down. I'm going to da 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 Yeah, no, my flesh, my flesh, my flesh. But my spirit is, 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 is alive unto God. And I know every time I do it, my spirit woman, she checks me and she's like, mm -mm, Andrea, you didn't act in love. Andrea, you didn't, you didn't walk in the spirit. You, you, you walked in your flesh. And it's about, when, when I say act now, it's taking action immediately. When you do something wrong, correct that thing immediately because you will make mistakes. You will fall down. You will fail but fall down and get right back up. Take action, act now. Remember, if anything you don't take away from this, this take this, act now. Whenever something happens that, that you need to turn it around, act now. If you wanna write that book, act now. If you wanna get that job, act now. If you wanna change your career, act now. If you wanna get into that relationship, act now. Whatever it is that you need to do, take some action, even if it's a small thing. If it's a small thing, if you're fed up of seeing your life the same way, then stop doing the same things. You can't keep doing the same things and expect to change. It's insanity. It's, they say it's insanity to do the same thing and expect a different outcome. If you add red and what color? I don't know, what's another blue? What color do you get? Purple, I think. If you add blue and um, yellow, you get green. You can't add blue and yellow and expect to get yellow. You can't add blue and yellow and expect to get blue. You add blue and yellow, you get green. It is what it is. There are certain laws that just are. If you sow seed, what happens? They grow. Brother, brother Key, have you got your hand up because you want to speak or were you just agreeing? I could see the hand up, but I wasn't sure. I'm not sure. Okay, maybe he was just he was just agreeing. Okay, I think he was just agreeing. If you did want to say something, let me know. Um, but yeah, you've got to act now. Take action in whatever it is that you want to do. Take action in whatever it is. Don't wait. Don't procrastinate. Procrastination is one of the biggest killers of destiny and purpose. When you procrastinate, listen. Hmm. When I I, I don't like washing dishes. I don't like washing dishes. So when I have to wash the dishes now, I have to not think about it. I literally have to just say to myself, Andrea, go wash the dishes. Yep, let's get up, let's go. I have to move. Because anyhow I sit down there for even three seconds, I'm not washing the dishes, you know? I'm not, because I'm going to tell myself, no, I don't want to put my hands in the water. I don't want to, oh, I don't want to touch that dirty stuff. Oh, until you can wash the dishes, I don't want to wash them. I start telling myself, oh, why I can't. I do that. How many of you do that? You, you know that there's something that you want to do. And as soon as you, you don't really want to do it, or your flesh doesn't want you to do it. So you start making excuses as to why. Oh, um, I can't do oh, you, what's an, what? So what are some of the common excuses that we give ourselves for not doing things? What's a, what's a, what are, huh? Sometimes I don't even have an excuse. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> that's, that's levels. I don't have time to make an excuse. I just don't want to do it. I don't need an excuse. I'm not justifying anything for anyone. Guess what? I just ain't doing it. You're just not that's doing it. I feel sometimes. See, that's levels. There's levels to this thing. I think that's I've levels. Of literature. It's literally really bad. <laughs> that is levels. When you literally don't even make up excuses why you're not doing it. That, but, but you know what? When you think about that, that means that's, that is, and, and this is not a dig at you, Tian, but that is somebody who has fully given over to their flesh. 
You've just, you, you don't even bother making excuses why you're not doing it. You've given over to your flesh and you let your flesh dictate to you in such a strong way that you no longer even fight it. It tells you not to do it and you're like, mm, okay. There's not even a fight. At least if there's a fight, you're kind of on the right track. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. Yeah, but, but why do I have to do it though? Why? Is that, yeah. is that the question that you ask? Yes, because I'm standing in the room. I'm looking at the clothes on the bed. Mm -hmm. I do yeah. not want to put them away. Because I'm sure, why? Because I'm not like I'm in the room. Okay, but if you don't put those clothes away, what's going to happen? Nothing. When I need the clothes, what I want to wear, I'll just pick the one I want to wear. Not in it. Okay, but will your room be tidy? Well, it's on the bed. It's folded up. It's okay, but we, okay, but it's on your bed. So will your bed be clear? I'm not using the bed. Oh, it's a, it's a spare bed? Yeah. Well, then leave it. So if, if it's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but okay. But the fact of the matter is, if it's if it's if it's okay. So if it's something that's like incidental, like that, if you say to yourself, okay, the clothes are there, I know I should fold them and put them away, but then mm. why, why, why? But you you you've started from the fact that you've started to ask the question why. You've now given yourself the reason why you don't need to do it because I don't sleep in the bed, so why should I put them away? I. But we know that a house with order, you know, and it's, and it's little things like this. I would say, why do I need to put it away? Because I want the energy flow in my house to be positive. I don't want any clutter. Like I look at my, my bedroom is another one of my Achilles heels. Why do I have to clean my bedroom? Because I like a clean room. I like to meditate in a clear space. I know that when, and when you're cleaning, especially when you clean with joy, you're touching all your things and you're putting really positive energy. You find that the energy in a room shifts when it's tidy. You find that when you walk into a room and it's clear, it has a, how many of you ladies notice that? Or guys, it's not just a ladies thing. But you've got to huh? pick up the, the energy to do it. There's no picking up energy. You can lift your hands. Go and do it. There's no yeah, picking up energy. If, if, listen, me, I don't, I don't use that excuse. From the time I saw my dad paralyzed, I don't use that excuse. I don't have energy. You know why? Because I'm so grateful that when I tell my hand to lift, it can lift. Because I watched my dad not even be able to move his finger. He went from one day of being able to drive his car to the next day not even be able to lift a finger he couldn't even move his bowels by himself and I have to have such an attitude of gratitude that I don't have this is what I'm telling you if my dad didn't if if that stuff didn't happen to my dad I don't think I'd be where I am today because that shook me it made right Donna it made me grateful so you know what every day I can come sit here and talk to you guys and I can walk and I can wave my hands and I can be animated I am going to do that because there was a there was a time when you never know what can happen but I watched my dad go from being able-bodied to he couldn't act now he had to wait when he wanted his teeth brushed he had to wait if a fly landed on his nose he had to wait he couldn't even flick the fly off his nose he had to wait. If a tear was running down his face and he wanted it wiped, he had to wait. If he wanted to go to the toilet, he had to wait. If he wanted to eat and he was hungry, he had to wait. I am sorry, but I refuse to let my life pass me by knowing that I can do all of these things because God has given me hands and feet and a mouth. I am going to take every single moment and give God glory with every single second of my life. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to encourage you guys to do the very same thing. And we are going to go and change the world one person at a time. I refuse. I will act now. This is what motivates me. These are the things that, and you know what? I told you this before. If I could go back and change anything, I wouldn't change a single blade of grass. Because if, if what happened never happened to my dad, if, I, if my dad never passed away, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have got to that low point, but then realized, hold on, Andre, what are you doing? What are you doing? Would this, would this make your dad happy? Would this, does this make you happy? Is, is this your destiny? Is this your purpose? No, I, carpe diem, I seize the day. I seize the day. I refuse, 
I refuse. ISI, iron sharpens iron. And this is what we are here to do. We are here to encourage each other. We are here to lift each other up. We are here to act now. And I pray that today's session has encouraged you to take some action. You guys, take action. Invite people to ISI. Invite people to come and hear. Share what you're learning here. Don't keep it for yourself and just be, yeah, mm, I learned some good stuff today. And then you just go on throughout the week and you don't even tell one person. What do you mean? Go and share. This is what we're here to do. Each one, teach one. We are lights in a dark place. Hi, Zez, see your face, Donna. <laughs> you know, we are here to encourage each other how many of you are encouraged today how many of you feel like you want to you want to take hey. some action who said yay Tian! <laughs> how many of you who else who else is encouraged mom you encouraged me my phone's dead it's becky <laughs> oh becky okay so so let me just ask you this those of you who said me and whatever what are you going to take action on this week what are you going to do this week tell me because this is going to this is going to force you to do it. My room. What? You're going to do your room, Chi Chi. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. I'm not I, did, I, did, I did mine, so I can't even say I'm going to do mine. I don't know what no, I'm going to do. No, the spare room, I mean. No, not huh? my bedroom. Like my bedroom is my sanctuary. I'm talking about the spare room. I will take the clothes and put them away. You're going to take the clothes and put them away. Well yeah, done, Chi Chi. Okay, mum, what are you going to do? My book. You're going to work on your book. I love that. Okay. What are you going to do, Danny? Daniel's like, um. Junior, what are you going to do? I'm going to start rubbing down some doors. Oh, yeah. Look, Junior, the truth is, if you rub down a door a week, it's going to take you 13 weeks to rub down those 13 doors. <laughs> but it will get done. Because we had this conversation like at least six weeks ago. If you was rubbing down a door a week, you would have rubbed down six doors by now, bro. Yeah, like, for yeah. real, for real. Like, you understand? It, it's no, but literally... I could, even, I, could even rub, I could even rub down six doors in a day. That shouldn't be a problem to me, really, because I've got an electric sander. Right, um, it's not even hand power. Look at this. Yeah, Look but it's like this. The dust afterwards, the this, so the you that. Know, it, stop. Uh, uh, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? We're not talking no. about that. We're not. No, no. <laughs> we're never going to talk about that because this is. But you see, this is what happens. He literally said he's going to do it, and then what happened? The flesh kicked in and said, "Oh, the dust. You're going to have to clean. Well, you're going to have to clean no, up I was the dust." Thinking about that. I'm thinking of that for prior. That the way that I was looking at it in the first yeah. place. Do you oh. know what I mean? I'm going to because I know I can clean up the dust. I've got a Hoover here. I can just. Pull that up. It's not a problem. I, That's it. I just need to just get around to doing it, and I'm going to do it. So we're going to ask you next week, guys. I'm going to be asking you next week. Yeah, what did you do? If I forget, somebody please remind me that. Let's do a check in with each other. Tian, what are you going to do? Becky, uh -oh. what are you going to do? Danielle, what are you going to do? Donna, what are you going to do? What are you guys going to do? Come on, talk to me. What are you guys going to do? Gonna say it. I'm going to be writing in my journal. You got, oh, well done. Yes, girl. Yes. See, don't let the crowd put you to shame you lot, you know. Don't do it. <laughs> Come on, who else? Who else? Who else? Well, Yeah, I, ha I have a room that I need to tidy. Clothes, same thing. Clothes. See, I'm telling you, the clothes. <laughs> guys, if I showed you the clothes that was on my bed, it was symbolic. Me and my, my clothes was my husband's. I was sleeping next to the clothes because I couldn't be bothered to move them. Yeah, I was. I really was. Tian, what are you going to do? So I'm going to be asking you guys about this next week, you know. So that, try not try to turn up. Who else is here? Missy, what are you going to do? Elle, what are you going to do? Tian, Talia, what are you going to do? My homework. You're going to do your homework? Yes. Sir. And you're not going to put it off? You're going to get it done? Yes, and I'm going to shower as well. Good. And get up to school on time and go to bed on time. This girl just set herself a whole load of girls. Look, you're getting round of applause. Look, look, you're getting round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Tian, what are you going to do? Missy, what are you going to do? Come on, guys. What am I going to do? What did I say I was going to do? I don't know. I be doing stuff all the time. I don't, I don't, I don't really procrastinate. I just get stuff done. 
stuff. I just get stuff done. But I tell you what, the truth is, you're going to keep on showing up. I'm going to keep showing up. That's what I'm going to do. Because I tell you what, it's not as easy as it looks, you know. It mm -hmm. really isn't. Coming on here every single Wednesday, I'm going to keep... And you know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to do that interview. I got an interview tonight at 11.30. I don't want to stay awake. I like my bed. I like sleeping. But I've got an interview um, on the Trinidadian radio station. Um, I'll post it in the group. Um, and so you guys can tune in if you want to, if you're still going to be up. I am going to show up. That's what I'm going to do. Yes. Thank you, mom. That's what I'm going to do. Who else? Who else? Who else? Tian, you're quiet. Guys, talk to me. I don't like it when you're all Sorry, silent. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, um, well, I don't, well, yeah, I'm going to just, I'm going to do my research in regards to my YouTube stuff. Yes. Um, well, I started that already, actually. I did it yesterday. Really proud of that. And well done. Yeah, I'm going to attempt to sit in front of the camera this weekend. You're going to attempt to sit in front yeah, of the camera. Yeah, because I need to be realistic with myself. Okay, so set a realistic goal. I'm going to set the camera up. How about just doing that? Okay, I'll set up. That's, you know, and this is what I'm saying, guys. Don't set unrealistic goals for yourself. Set, like, if you feel like, uh, rather than saying I'm going to attempt to do that, say something that you know you could do. So I'm going to set the camera up. Doesn't mean you're going to sit in front of it. Doesn't mean you're going to record anything. But setting it up, that's just, remember what I said, take a small action. And Tian, if you've got the camera there now, go set it up now. If you're at home, go to that room now. If, you, if you've got that journal, um, is it Maya? Was it Maya who said she's going to write in her journal? Maya, if you've got that journal, go get your pen and go and get your journal. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. We ain't got time to be procrastinating. I Procrastination kills destinies guys let's put into action this week the 30 second rule give yourself 30 seconds to talk yourself into it rather than out of it talk yourself into it give yourself 30 seconds if there's something you want to do okay guys um what's my thing um that i, sh that I shouldn't do but i keep doing eating bread like I, I, yeah see i'm trying i'm trying to think of what's what's the substitute for eating bread i can't even think of what's the substitute so I don't eat the bread. Maybe someone can help me. What can I eat instead of bread? Maybe I can have more salad. Maybe I can have some, I don't know, vegetables or, you know, maybe I can try and lose that pound that I'm trying to lose. Like I want to lose about, I think I want to lose about five pounds. So what am I going to do to lose the five pounds? I need to actually start thinking about losing weight. I need to get my mind in that place because I say I want to lose it, but I'm, I'm not even thinking about it. I don't even think about, eating healthy, I just keep doing the same thing every day. And then I keep going and checking the scales and seeing if it's gone down and it hasn't. And I'm wondering why, my mind ain't there. Half of, half of, the, half of winning the battle is putting your mind there, you know, because your mind is so powerful. If you decide that you, like I've been saying for years, I wanna be, I'm gonna be a millionaire. Not I want to be a millionaire, I'm gonna be a millionaire. But I never knew how I was gonna get there. But then it was in my mind, I was like, well, Andrea, if you're saying you're going to be a millionaire, then you've got to have a millionaire mindset. So what I started to do is I started to study. I started to think, how do millionaires think? What do they do? And then it started to open me up to all of this kind of stuff. I started learning new things. I started to be like, wow, it's, it's a whole different mindset. You've got to have that mindset shift. You've got to be like, now's the time for me to have that mindset shift and, and take small actions quickly. Small actions quickly. Small actions quickly. And if that's your prayer, guys, I trust me, God will honor it. God will honor it. And you know, you have the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm saying to the Holy Spirit, I want a, I, I want a life coach. Imagine I'm so jealous of all you guys who, who have a life coach and I'm actually your life coach. And I'm like, but God, I don't have a life coach. I want a life coach. Everybody on here has got a life coach and I don't have a life coach. I need a life coach. And you know, God said to me, right now, until that person manifests and shows up, Holy Spirit is the best life coach that you can ever have. And I'm telling you, I sit in the morning and I listen to Holy Spirit and he just, he just downloads, he downloads. Even this topic, 
I got it through, I was meditating and the Holy Spirit was like, act now. And I was like, yeah, that's a good one. And then I went into my session and mum was being very disobedient. She didn't want to go walk in. And all I heard was act now. I said, mum, put your coat on. What do you mean put my coat on, Andrea? That's the session talk. I said, mum, put your coat on. I don't want to put my coat on. I don't want to go nowhere. I said, mum, put your coat on. She got her coat. Where are we going? I don't want to go. Said, well, if you don't want to go out the house in your pajama bottoms, you better go put some tracksuit bottoms on. She went put on tracksuit bottoms, changed her head scarf, and next thing I was like, right, we're going for a walk. She was like, but I don't want to go for a walk. I said, yeah, but you do because you said you want to go for a walk. But so let's go for a walk at now. Don't think about it. And I tell you another thing not to do. Do not look at the magnitude of what you're supposed to do. Don't look at the end goal. Look at the small steps, do it in small chunks. Because you know, sometimes when you wanna do something, yeah, you can get very overwhelmed at the magnitude of what you're trying to do. So like me, when I have to clean my bedroom, when I have to clean my bedroom, I get very overwhelmed. I look at my room and I'm just like, oh, I can't bother it, I'll do it tomorrow. Because I look at the whole room as a whole. So now when I have to clean my room, I don't think about it. I just go to my dressing table and I'm like, just pick up, you know, put, put my makeup in order, put all my brushes back in the, in the pot and I start doing. And then I move on to the floor and I'm like, okay, pick, pick that off the floor, put those shoes in order. Okay, then when I've done that, all right, all right, let me just fold up these clothes on the bed. I do it in, I don't think about it on a big whole thing. Like if I thought about ISI in the magnitude of what I have to do, I think, I think I would just, I think I would just give up. I literally think I would just give up because it's like, you've got, to, you've got to create a program. You've got to build a website. You've got to promote. You've got to send texts. You've got to do flyers. You've got to create a video program. You've got to reach out to people. You've got to create content to come and speak every week. You've got to book, do your booking system. You've got to call clients. You've got to do, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's too much. It's, it's so much. So I don't think of it like that. I take it one bite at a time. Today is ISI. Until six o'clock, six, no, five o'clock, five o'clock comes, right, cool. Start getting ready. Just, just don't think about where we're going. Just get ready. Just put yourself together. Okay, I don't think, 5.30 comes or six o'clock comes. I'm like, right, go and set up the light. Go and set up your, your thing. Yeah, right, that's done. Right, quickly, get your drink, have something to eat so you're not starving, Marvin. Go to the toilet do this thing, just small actions, but it's small actions consistently that are gonna help you guys to win. Um, yeah, I don't really have much more to say. I'm not just gonna chat for chat and sake, but if you guys have any questions or you have any comments, um, yeah, please do chime in. Anybody got anything they wanna say? Is anyone, is, are you guys encouraged by this today? Do you feel a bit inspired? Are you guys inspired? I hope so. I hope so. I hope this inspires you guys to really just, just take action. Can I ask for a little bit of an allowance this week? Can you, can you have an allowance? How much of well, an allowance do you want? Well, I had, to go, I had to go to the hospital this morning with my eyes. So I'm not able to sort of like get active right now with any kind of work. Um, I've been described to have blepharitis in my eyes. Um, they're quite painful in the ball and so forth. So, um, yeah, I'm just excusing myself for this week until I get better. Okay, but can can I can I ask you something? Sorry, I, you know me. I just I, I am that chick. What yeah. could you do though? What huh? could you do? What could you do? That's not gonna like. What could you do? Well, I could probably take the wardrobe and the bed out of the first room, out of the bedroom for a start. That's all that's left in there for me to start up with the actual decorating, but, um, you know, maybe I could take the wallpaper off one wall, which I'm going to use as a feature. So yeah, maybe I can do those, but you know what I mean? There's not much more I can do after that. And well, that's- Hold on, that's to. three actions that you just said that you could do. Like you just, been... asked to be ex you just asked to be excused a minute ago. And then I've just challenged you and said, well, okay, I'll excuse you from doing that. But what could you do to move you in that direction? What actions could you take? You could have said, you know what? I could have, you could even go and research some colors that you want to use. You could start deciding what paint you want. You could 
these are things there's always something you can do no matter and this is why i'm glad you did that because it just shows you you just gotta think outside of the box sometimes you gotta just take your mind okay and it's and it's a legitimate reason you was in the hospital your eyes hurting and i hope you're okay by the way but you know and Mm -hmm. and all of that but at the same time for me there's still something you can do and it's when you've had that mindset shift of don't let anything stop you from doing what you need to do bar being on your deathbed and your hands can't move then it's not worth doing it anyway because you're dead soon you're so, making I know, that so bad, isn't it? Huh? Now you're making very good sense in what you're saying to me there. Um, and you are a hundred percent right. Um, I totally agree. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad I'm glad that I'm glad that that you that you get that. Because and that's it, guys, it's literally having that mindset shift. And that's what we're working towards. Remember at the beginning of I think it was a month ago or maybe six weeks ago, we were talking about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. It really is just transforming your mind and shifting your mind from one place to another and be like, okay, it literally anything I want to do, you know, I want a Bentley, yeah? And I don't have Bentley money right now. So, you know, I did. I went on the Bentley website and I created my Bentley. It was free. It was free. It didn't cost me nothing. And I feel so good choosing my interior, choosing the stitching that I wanted, choosing the thing on the chair, choosing, like, I I might not get my Bentley, I might not get my Bentley for however long, but I, I moved in that direction. I thought about it and I was like, okay, what can I do to take action to move me in that direction? Go and have a look at the Bentley website. Do you even know how much Bentleys cost? No, I never knew. I didn't know. There's a lot of money, there's a lot of money. And I'm, I'm not there yet, but when I'm there, praise the Lord, it'd be a wonderful thing. But it's not a priority. Let me just say that. It's not like it's a priority. It's, it's a heart's desire, but it's that thing of when you have a desire to do something, like I want to um, create my um, online coaching program. So what did I do? I've started writing down the steps that I need to take to create that program. I've started doing research. I've signed up to programs um, to teach me how to create an online coaching program. So these are things that I'm doing moving forward. And I would say to you guys, I think most of you, a lot of you guys are on it, but if you're not getting coaching, if you haven't, you don't have to come to me, but I'm telling you what, having a life coach makes a big difference. It really does because you have somebody who has the skill and the knowledge to help you to implement the things. See, like Junior just came and said what he said, only because of the skills that I have, I knew what to say straight away. So when you come with the with the with the problem, I'll come with the solution. You come with your map, I'll help you read it. That's the all it is. You tell me where you want to go, and I'm a good map reader. I can say, well, this is the best route to get from here to here. You tell me where you want to go, and that's what coaches do we help you to get there guys i i don't have much more to say i'm gonna pray for you guys and and just bless you and let you have a wonderful evening i'm gonna go and prepare myself and get ready for this um interview that i've got later on and if you do want to check it out i'm gonna post it in the isi um group chat so you can um i think i posted it already but i'll post the link i can't remember if i posted the link so you can check it out it's at 11 11 30 tonight our time so it's a bit late but it's like 6 30 um trinidadian time so um also this is recorded so i will put up the recording on my facebook page not on my facebook page on my youtube channel so anything any sessions that you've missed they'll be on the youtube channel so you can go and check them out and there's some really really good ones on there so go and check them out and just be blessed and yeah mom would you would you like to pray us out yeah okay heavenly father we thank you so much for this evening we thank you for what you've done we thank you for giving us a a receptive heart to receive from you, Father God. We thank you for Andrea that you have used in such a mighty way, Father God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that everyone, Father God, that's been on the platform will be touched, Lord, because these 
these words are coming from you through Andrea. Father God, I pray that you continue to bless her and strengthen her. And Lord, continue to download in her spirit, Lord, what you want her to do for your people, Lord, because you have called her to do this work. You have called her for such a time as this, Lord. And I know many are appreciating what she's doing. And Father God, I pray you bless everyone that's been on the platform tonight. Those that had already gone, <clears throat> I pray you bless them, Father God. Father God, I just, you, I want to pray, sorry, especially for Spirit to show me Choo Choo. Uh, sorry, but I just need to pray for you. Do you mind, Chuchu, if I pray for you, especially? Please, 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 please do. Please. Yeah, the Spirit's just... Um, uh, hallelujah. Father God, I lift Chuchu up before you. Father God, you know her. You know what she's going through. You know her desires. You know her pain. Father God, you know the problems that she's going through. I don't know Chuchu, but you knew her before she was formed in her mother's womb. You've been watching over her from in the womb, Lord, until now. Father God, I thank you for her right now. Father God, I do not know what she's going through, but you do. And you've placed her in my heart to pray for her. And I pray, Father God, whatever battles, whatever hurdles that my God, she's going through right now. <clears throat> Sorry. I pray, Father God, that you will intervene on her behalf. Father God, I pray for that situation. Lord, I pray that you touch her right now. I pray you will lift her up, oh God. I pray, God, that you'll strengthen her for this journey that you have started her on in the name of Jesus. Father God, I praise you on the behalf of your daughter, Chuchu, right now. Father God, you see everything about her. You know her, Father God. You know and understand what she's going through. You see her pain. You see my God in the name of Jesus. Touch you right now. Touch her right now in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit minister to her right now, Father God. Touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, Father God. Father God, I thank you for her, Father God. <clears throat> I want to see big wins, small wins, but I want to hear about some wins next week. And please, guys, invite somebody along next week. Share the link. If you've got whatsapp share it on your whatsapp story share it on your facebook page share it on your instagram let's get people in we want to really i just want to share with as much people and touch as much lives as i can and i can't do that by myself but i can do it with your help so guys be blessed have an awesome awesome week and i will see you all same time same place next week i love you guys god bless you okay <laughs> bye <laughs> Yes, yes, I want to talk to you, but not on. I want to talk to you.